Adobe Media Encoder also saw a lot of improvements. The new features include El Capitan support, the ability to compress 4K and UHD files, new codecs, including, finally, H.265. The video limiter, which most of us call broadcast safe, can now be applied during compression, which means that we don't need to worry about adding it during our edit session. We can apply it after the edit is complete. We also have automatic loudness correction. This is the exact same function inside Audition, but rather than worrying about it in Audition, we can create our mix in Audition, send it over to AME, and have AME, during the compression process, make sure our loudness settings are correct. There's also automated publishing to Facebook, and an essential but not necessarily helpful setting to convert HDR video to SDR. Let me just talk about this conform process for a second. When we go from high def to standard def, or standard def to high def, we're essentially changing resolution. When we're going from HDR video to SDR video, we're not changing resolution. What we're doing is we're changing the actual colors that are represented. And although we do need an automated way to go from HDR down to SDR, or from SDR to HDR, in point of fact, while that's useful, it's not going to be overwhelmingly helpful. What's going to make more sense is to do two color passes, one to specifically create an HDR video and a second to create an SDR video because the colors and saturations and luma levels are so different that they don't easily map one to the other as they do when they're changing resolution from HD to SD or HD to UHD. So although it's really important to have this conform process, in point of fact, you're going to find yourself doing two color passes, one for HDR and a second for SDR. That doesn't mean this feature is not relevant. It's important, it's relevant, needs to be there. I'm just setting expectations that you're going to need to do two color passes. But there is other cool stuff that I can show you. Take a look. Now we're inside Adobe Media Encoder and it looks exactly the same as the earlier version. That which is different is sort of buried in the middle. First, we now have support, if I click on the plus sign, we now have support for not only H.264, but HEVC, which is the new name for H.265. I haven't had enough time with Adobe Media Encoder to determine performance, changes if there's any in terms of H.264 compression, nor have I worked out compression settings for H.265. Keep in mind that H.265 is the latest and greatest, but virtually nothing supports H.265 playback. So again, Adobe is future-proofing us, giving a chance to start to experiment. The big advantage of H.265 over H.264 is that the file sizes will decrease about 40% without affecting the image quality. So it's nice to know it's there. It's time to do testing. It's time to discover how this works, but it's not necessarily time yet to implement on a wide scale basis. It's going to roll out over 2016 now that we finally have the right tools in our hands. In addition to H.265 support and in addition to being able to compress larger videos, remember in Adobe Media Encoder we could only compress a, an HD movie, we couldn't compress a 4K file, now we can compress a 4K or a UHD file inside Media Encoder. But the other thing that I want to show you, if we look at the screen, is this one, under Effects. As we scroll down under Effects toward the bottom, this is what I really like. The video limiter is now included as an add-in, so I can now guarantee during compression that all of my colors and luma levels remain broadcast safe. And then right below it is the loudness normalization. This allows me to do a pass on my audio and make sure that it stays within the ATSC spec. These two are brand new and they make media encoder especially desirable because I can guarantee my colors don't oversaturate. I guarantee my white levels don't go over 100%. I guarantee that my audio levels meet all current regulations for loudness. And I do it in compression where I'm not pressing up against the deadline. I focus on creativity in Premiere and I focus on compression and cleanup in media encoder. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the new features inside Adobe Media Software. For the complete version of this online training, become a member of our video training library at LarryJordan.com slash membership and look for Webinar 186. 
If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.